Hey all, uh, my name is Dawn Weges, and we'll be talking today about Gatsby, JS, Flagtail, Netlify, and a little bit of Gitpod. It is definitely a new tech kind of sandwich. Uh, clearly, I like new shiny things, so I'm excited to just give a brief overview on um, uh, what I did with this tech stack um, and uh, also, future talk, I just got accepted to PyCon Australia talk, so I'll be giving a revised version of this talk, probably going in more in depth um, at PyCon Australia, so hopefully I see you there. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, I'm Dawn, you can find me on Twitter. I uh, used to tweet too much, now I tweet almost too much, um, at Dawn we just says. Um, I am a Wagtail Core team member. I just recently joined the team and I am around an intimidating amount of brilliant people on that team. They're amazing and they're just so kind all the time. So it's, um, it's kind of an honor to be on that team. Um, and so this is one of the first kind of contributions that I've really done um, on as a core team member. Um, I hope to do more things from this topic. Um, and uh, in a lot of wagtail slash react headless wagtail type things for the uh, beginner and intermediate level um, with publishing content and blocking. Um, so that'll be exercising some new muscles for me um, there. Hope to see you on some of that content. If you have suggestions on types of content or partnership or things like that, um, I'm, I always love making new friends and making connections. Um, Beyond that, I am a developer at Two Rock Software, a small Django shop. Um, again, uh, I mean, I love working with awesome people. Um, it's important to me, it's one of my roles. Um, so I'm in good company there. Um, and I also am a Django and React consultant. So my company is called uh, Rugby Street Designs. I live in Philly um, and got acclimated and got introduced to uh, Django in Philadelphia at DjangoCon 2016. Um, and I uh, came through Django Girls. So I am proof that it works. Um, I am a dog mom and a queer woman of color and I'm very proud of both. And uh, that's my pup. So uh, the meat of the talk is about Wagtail and Gatsby in future versions of the talk. I'd like to also get more into the two other big words, uh, Netlify and Gitpod. Um, there's some new developments there just to make things easier. Um, what I love is being able to start with very little experience or uh, just start from nothing and being able to build um, an app or site uh, very, very quickly. That's something that both uh, Django and React and then their um, um, and extensions of those Wagtail and Gatsby uh, really pride themselves on is being able to start from uh, very little. So the goal of the experiment uh, was to try out some shiny new things. Um, as a independent consultant, um, a lot of times, um, and also with T-Rock, we're starting new pro um, projects where we have small and medium businesses, we want to uh, be efficient, but we don't want to skip, um, skip out on any of the uh, really cool uh, features of some of these uh, larger frameworks that are really sustaining like entire companies. Um, I mean, we have an entire company is built off of, off of React. Um, so um, the current version um, is of this talk is a short introduction to Gatsby JS um, to a Wagtail audience. So I won't be speaking very much on uh, the benefits of Wagtail and the cool things on Wagtail, why we, why we love it. Um, but that should be more heavily in the PyCon Australia talk. Um, and it'll be a primer on uh, why they're together and how to get started. Uh, so, so Gatsby, uh, for those who don't know, is a progressive web app generator. Um, it is, um, you can do full stack on, on Gatsby. Um, it, one of the things that it uh, uh, touts itself for is being able to handle a, a bunch of different data sources. Just like Wagtail, it is a plugin focused uh, ecosystem. Um, so you really can integrate it with tons of things and they have uh, tens of thousands of users and a very, very active community. I'll get more into that later as well. Um, 
and is very good of a, a project for small and medium, um, uh, small and medium projects. Uh, just if you want to whip something up quickly without sacrificing design, performance, hosting costs. So one of the benefits of having a um, web app generator or a static site generator, if you're more familiar with that terminology. Gatsby, it's all kind of hairy and it's a big word more so to make sure you're, you're recognizing that uh, with, with a progressive web app, you're not sacrificing the, the functionality. Uh, you still have that uh, JavaScript and it does feel um, more of a modern approach when you are um, uh, presenting that app to the client side. And so what a web app generator will do, uh, it'll take the code that you write um, in whatever language. So if you're familiar with um, Jekyll or Haskell, um, uh, you, Gatsby is written in uh, React, <clears throat> and then it will distill all of that um, and then uh, present it to the client side. It is incredibly efficient. Um, and one of the also the benefits is SEO. Uh, React is known for not being very good with, uh, with SEO, but because it is a static site generator, um, you will have Google um, uh, scraping and traversing the site um, in a way that's just like a flat HTML site, um, highly performant. Uh, so typically we're making calls from the client to the server in the progressive web apps. Um, so the static S site will have it distilled down um, and rehydrate. Uh, so both Gatsby and uh, Wagtail are open source frameworks. Um, and uh, we'll, I mean, there's more talks today and tomorrow um, and just brilliant people on here that can talk more about the uh, awesome features of Wagtail. Um, like photo identification and like auto photo tagging, just really cool talks that I've seen over the years, a lot of which are on YouTube. Uh, so as I mentioned, there's excellent, uh, really, really active communities. Both frameworks um, emphasize uh, a smooth developer experience. Um, for example, and I'll get more into this um, as well, uh, it all ties together, but uh, the Gatsby CLI is just incredibly easy. You say Gatsby new project name and you use the uh, source of the project and it automatically creates the file structure that you need, uh, very similar to other very intuitive uh, modern CLIs. Um, and uh, Wagtail um, performs this very similar experience with uh, focusing on how well the developer can get up and running and how quickly and how intuitive, I mean the best the best code is readable code. Um, both are very accessible, plug-in architecture, and uh, both uh, tout being uh, very secure and working on maintaining uh, high levels of security. Uh, so my background in approaching this uh, site is not really an expert on um, all of these technologies. My main background is in Django and React. Um, and then more recently in the past year, I've stuck those two together and done headless wagtail with not ex uh, uh, taught myself as an expert and by any means. So uh, this is definitely a primer and uh, what will come down the road will be uh, more intro applications to um, how to start. Uh, so I've never deployed to Netlify before. Mostly I do um, like Heroku or I am a user experience developer, a developer and we have like DevOps teams. Um, and I'm also a beginner with Gitpod, but everyone's a beginner with Gitpod. As we get into it, I'll explain what Gitpod is for those who don't know, but it's a very new, uh, new feature uh, that also enhances developer experience and started from scratch. It's a theme. Um, <coughs> So we don't want to have to compromise with some of these applications So starting quick, going fast, um, having it look beautiful. We don't want to compromise um, between a hard-coded um, static site, which is highly performance, and a full CMS. Um, so I'll give you the punchline early. Uh, the, the experiment was uh, somewhat of a success. Um, and then future versions, I'll be able to share some code and things like that, but no code will be shared today. Um, I also won't be taking questions today, but I will be around in the Slack channels. I'm, I'm a very friendly person, so reach out. I like reaching friends. So 
So why would we do headless wagtail? Um, and we've had that question a little bit in the previous talk, um, and it's a theoretical debate. I enjoy it uh, because I did come from the JavaScript background. Um, I do like the progressive web app experience and um, the component architecture. You can have atomic design and uh, really recycle and reuse a lot of components, especially as uh, projects get more complicated. But even the more simple ones, I think it's a great framework to be able to think about how you're going to design your site as a developer, um, what goes where and what information needs to go where and, and how. Um, and it is an efficient way of doing it. Um, Headless uh, does allow for um, uh, that same backend API structure to be used for lots of different applications. And as the emergence um, and accessibility of jumping into the Internet of Things, that's um, a positive for why go, going headless. Um, you, I mean, and I'm working on a project now where we're just about to uh, we're thinking about going uh, React Native um, and having the same Django, Django backend. Uh, shout out to Caleb, um, who runs uh, Learn Wagtail and um, has a ton of headless wagtail content on his site and on YouTube. Uh, so why Gatsby? So I have a screenshot to the left of a um, of their starter page. Starters are um, what I mentioned earlier, where you do Gatsby new site name and then the, and the link, and it will um, have really great contributions for starter pages. I would, don't tout myself as the designer um, um, or the one with the design eye. It will, as somebody who wants to start from something and have something really pretty very quickly, um, you're able, you're handed a, a, a site that like really can look very beautiful and clean and modern um, from the jump. Um, the key features of React are all uh, all available with Gatsby. You're not sacrificing any of that. It is written in React. Um, and with uh, certain plugins, you can use um, any ECMAScript version. Um, and as you are deviating from the normal CRUD application, uh, create, re uh, create, read, update, and delete, um, you have Python and React at your fingertips to be able to integrate that um, uh, like you would otherwise with a more uh, with an application that's more custom and has more heavy lifting. More beautiful designs, uh, just kind of giving you a little bit better of a close up. Um, and if you can see down here in the bottom, uh, it's Gatsby new, Gatsby starter profile, Kara, and then you have the GitHub link and it, it, it just starts from source. Um, and they have a very easily accessible website to kind of look over it and um, to search for them. So uh, Gatsby JS. Um, does have multiple data sources. CMS markdown data um, types are uh, where we can we can gather all the sources and it gives um, to one location. Um, so I've spent more time with uh, Django Rust framework than I have with GraphQL. Um, they are different. Um, they uh, one is a uh, GraphQL is a runtime. Um, uh, search tool and also has a really, really flexible uh, ability to query through your data and data endpoints. Um, Django West framework, I mean, has really, really intuitive and great, um, great way of looking through your data and, and seeing um, display pages through the, the client side as well, um, but doesn't have that um, live runtime querying ability. Um, I think that was probably the biggest barrier for me is getting comfortable with GraphQL. Still don't think I'm, I'm quite there. Um, but it is uh, when you're adding the two to that together, you have GraphQL on top of your, on your um, Django site. Um, and, it, and it gets a little weird, not bad, just, just interesting. And I'll, I'm showing a little bit of code later um, to show to show some, uh, to get you a little bit more acclimated. 
Um, but they don't have a complex server set, um, set up. It is very scalable, as I mentioned. Um, and they have uh, code sandboxes throughout their, uh, their documentation um, to try things out and, and get, you, um, get you jumping in quickly. So here is a screenshot of um, GraphQL, uh, which is where you can uh, poke around and look at what the uh, endpoints look like of your uh, data structures and things like that. Uh, so here are some resources, they're just links. Um, I will show this again at the end, it's the last slide. Um, that's one of the challenges with um, tackling this pro um, project is that uh, the resources uh, that are available, the links that are available with GraphQL and Wagtail are very few. I mean, they're both very new frameworks, so we're expecting this is new territory, that's the point of the talk. Um, and I'm hoping to contribute to that space. Um, and um, they uh, have a level of assumption that doesn't, uh, that's not quite beginner, more like intermediate, um, but it's not, uh, doesn't need um, advanced level knowledge. You're not reinventing uh, the wheel necessarily. Uh, both, I would highly recommend both Gatsby JS and Wagtail's original documentation. They put a lot of work into it, uh, both uh, frameworks. Um, so I always start there, um, but we also have a lot of activity on the Wagtail channels. Um, so I put in a few of my, the channels that I look at frequently for Gatsby and Wagtail um, and Headless. Um, <clears throat> but we're really everywhere, the community. Uh, Graphene Django and Wagtail GraphQL API um, are, what you need to uh, translate Wagtail's custom models to your GraphQL schema. Um, and that added a little extra, um, just a learning curve, not familiar with it originally. Um, and uh, I'm more familiar with just graphing Django um, and figuring out how GraphQL is going to curate uh, query. I just needed to learn more about how uh, Wagtail decides to set up their um, the models that they, they provide for you um, and does a lot of work and thought with how, how that's displayed. So here's how I set up my project. Um, this is by no means the um, definitive way of doing it, um, but I have my API folder with my uh, initialize the, app, the API app, and I have um, the schema in there to define uh, that we are going from Wagtail to uh, GraphQL. Um, uh, this is just a regular uh, Django blog app, um, and I will go in, here we go on the far right is the, um, uh, is the graph, uh, excuse me, the Gatsby front end blog. And components. Uh, I hope this is able to be read, but the point is more on the right. This is the Gatsby config JS. Uh, if you want to look at the previous slide. Um, Gatsby config is within the source file for the front end. Um, and this is how it structures any of the plugins that you're going to have. And there are thousands of plugins with uh, thousands of users um, and very, very active repositories. So um, here's just a few. I mean, I, it was just kind of a smattering of it. Ones. I mean, I come from an e-commerce background. I started as a project manager um, at an e-commerce org. Um, so I'd like to get back, back into that. I don't do a lot with it more. Um, but finding fun frameworks that um, interact with uh, e-commerce um, tools are cool. 
Gatsby has shot from Shopify, which is really popular, um, Google Analytics, things like that. Uh, here is an example of the blog page. Uh, I'll skip back to the um, file structure to show quickly. Uh, blog page is within the pages uh, folder, but the, I mean, not necessarily, but uh, the pages folder of the, the original source file. Um, what we are doing is creating, this is, this is very React. We are importing React. Uh, we are, have prop types. This is, uh, so if your eyes start crossing with all the JavaScript, I understand. Um, we are creating a component. Um, and then we also are explicitly using SEO components um, uh, that were uh, part of the starter application that you can use. They have some in the, some of the starter applications um, and just make it uh, kind of explicitly shown to emphasize SEO and accessibility. Um, if you see that we're uh, passing in this data, we are defining the, the pages. This is how uh, Wagtail has their data structure for the Wagtail core pages. We are rendering each of these pages. Um, and these are the, this is the dynamic title, title heading, things like that. Um, this is a list. And uh, we are returning this layout with, um, um, with base page in here. Uh, this is the blog page on the left, more of the blog page, and this is on the right, Gatsby node uh, JS. So, <clears throat> Gatsby node uh, on the right, uh, these, this is where they create all of the pages together. Um, this is where we are also doing the initial query for um, all of our data. This make, this part of what makes it highly performant um, is that it, it grabs um, the data that you're looking for. I have very a small bit of data because it's just a, uh, like a demo site right now. Um, but this is uh, what, what Gattis is all for you and then has it on the client side uh, ready to use um, and does not have to go back and forth between the client and the server. And on the left, we are doing a similar GraphQL query, um, but it is only for this particular base page. Might need to speed up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, this is more of Gatsby node uh, JS. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is just focusing on that center part uh, where uh, what, I, what trips me up and what I had the most trouble with was navigating um, GraphQL and understanding how, how that relationship works. So that this zooms in on just that portion. Um, I'm back to my um, app setup. So did it work? Um, yes. Was it? kind of wonky and a little bit um, hard for me to, to link the two together. Yes, um, it is not for the absolute novice and the absolute beginner, but it is something that can, when there's more boilerplate codes or more demo codes and more, um, um, uh, more blog posts regarding the subject, it definitely could, ease, uh, could be a beginner and intermediate topic. There is no reason it, it shouldn't be. It's just new territory. Um, I think that in the future that I will continue to be using, I'm using it. I have a project um, in the works and that will just kind of spit out um, more pages like this um, and be, um, it will not be cost prohibitive for myself to develop it or for my clients to be able to host it. Gitpod. Gitpod's really cool. I'm not going to be able to talk a lot about Gitpod, um, but um, uh, we, Wagtail team has done some work with um, 
was having their own wagtail git pod and i'd like to have a similar one that has a wagtail gatsby git pod and so what it essentially does is when you go to your uh repo uh on github there's this blue button and it opens up this uh in the browser ide it's basically like the vs code in the uh in your browser um and it automatically from the um uh, from Docker requirements and the Git, um, GitPod YAML file uh, will create all of the requirements that you need to set up the project. This is really, really cool if you want to continue to, um, if you're teaching or if you're doing code reviews, um, each of the workspaces, they call them workspaces, um, are, will remain open for about two, uh, for two weeks. Um, and so that is a good and a bad. I mean, they, they are made to be temporary. Uh, if you forget about it, you lose your work. Um, however, uh, it does ha allow you to um, um, contribute code back to the original code source and things like that. So it's, I mean, it, it's just a different way of, um, of contributing. It's, it's kind of cool, but you can do this development environment for any GitLab, GitHub, or Bitbucket project. Um, and if you want to just jump in and start playing in a sandbox environment, it allows you to do that. Um, I mentioned you can implement new features, merge and fix, troubleshoot. Um, and just like VS Code, it has its own Linux uh, terminal and uh, based off the Docker images. And you can have up to 16 workspaces, which is really cool. Uh, so here is the uh, git pod yaml file and this is uh, what the wagtail git pod is doing um, and i mean it's even creating um, a admin user for you um, with the password change me Uh, so de deploying with Netlify is uh, similarly easy uh, to a lot of the other tools. I mean, this is all based on trying to make your user experience and going from zero to deploy um, easier. Um, and um, Tom Dyson has um, has code uh, for uh, the Wagtail Netlify connection. You're, uh, you are installing the Netlify C um, CLI. Um, and then pip installing Wagtail Netlify. Uh, there's a few little configurations within your installed apps and you run your migrations and then um, it's very easy to deploy with Netlify and, and Wagtail. So, um, this was not a true blue case study. Um, a true case study should be coming uh, forward um, where I can kind of look at some of the pain points that I had and where my uh, clock kind of maxed out a little bit more than I wanted it to, but it's definitely a shiny new thing. Um, so it is highly performant um, and uh, really good for CRUD sites working quickly. And the, I mean, who doesn't think the GraphQL playground is kind of cool? Um, it's debatable on whether or not it's necessary when we have other um, awesome tools with, with Django, but um, it's not quite straightforward yet. Um, so the next steps, I'm going to be publishing um, Gatsby Wagtail starter on Gitpod. There will be a more detailed talk um, at PyCon Australia blog posts and a demo app to companion the blog posts, all of which are a work in progress. I wish I could have shown them to you today, but now we are connected. Now we're friends. Now you have my Twitter. So um, it'll all be uh, posted and available um, hopefully soon this summer. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's my talk. I appreciate the time. It was great meeting everybody. Great. Thanks, Don. So uh, I have a question if you're willing to accept questions. About that. Sure. Okay. Most of the questions, I mean, I gave the context of what I know. Yep. So, shoot. Okay. So, uh, 
just one question. Do you think that um, by going this route with Gatsby that it gives you a little bit of flexibility in terms of what the back end could be? Um, or is it pretty tightly coupled with Wagtail at this point? It's, it's really tightly coupled, and any change that you would make to the back end would have you uh, doing more work with the uh, uh, Gatsby config. Um, and so just any, it's, you kind of have to figure out what you want beforehand and then make those changes. And if there's going to be a lot of iterations through what your data is going to look like, it may not be the best option. Um, and then I'm just seeing a question come in too uh, from Timmy Smalls. Uh, have you ever used Wagtail Grapple? Uh, it's a Wagtail wrapper around graphene that allows for easy integration. Um, no, add it. Yeah. Anyone want to speak to maybe Wagtail Grapple if they had? Or in the chat? Okay. Um, I mean, I've, I've used it before, not in context with Gatsby, but. Um, in its current state, it's, it's pretty handy for getting quickly up and running with uh, models in GraphQL if you haven't done that kind of setup before. Um, we talked about using it at the city of Austin, but we had kind of already rolled our own sort of graphene Django implementation. And I think the like, time cost of transitioning wasn't quite there. Um, it definitely has a lot of promise. I think we could definitely use contributions it might be kind of fun to fork off the gatsby starter and see if we could if i could wrap around it with grapple as an example i'm not sure how performant and mature some of the graphql stuff is on the graphene side and on the yep. grapple side at like scale that's been like a worry of mine but of course all of us working together on a solution is like a better shot at addressing those than each of us off doing our own thing anyways right yeah, if I may um, also uh, say something, I uh, I've also worked with um, uh, Wagtail Grapple for uh, for quite a while now, and it's proven really useful to be able to query all the um, all the, the typical uh, Wagtail models. So, for example, images and pages, and uh, I use it in a couple of sites, and I have um, implementations for my stream fields, for example. So I can really, um, yeah, it, it's really useful. Uh, in conjunction with Wagtail, um, and I generally use um, graphene on the side for everything that is not directly Wagtail related. So if it's just a regular uh, mo Django model, I will go with uh, graphene and like uh, mix them up together. Cool. Thanks. Well, I think that's my time. Uh, thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. <laughs>